Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where it's Wednesday, which means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'll talk about a certain comic book graphic novel or comic book subject. Steve Donahue on his channel will talk about that same graphic novel or comic book subject. It is our world's finest team up that we do once a week, and this week, Boy, do we have a doozy of a comic book to talk about. We're talking about Batman, A Death in the Family. The result of the grim and gritty era of comic books in the 80s. A result of that. This is probably... Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about this comic book. So this comic book came out a couple years after... Frank Miller did The Dark Knight Returns, and after uh, Watchmen came out from Alan Moore, and Crisis on Infinite Earth ha Earths happened. So a lot of things were happening in comic books at the time. Frank Miller's The Dark Knight was a big deal and a, and a smash hit, and suddenly that was the way to do Batman. Batman should be grim and gritty. Now, of course, Batman is a dark character, as is appropriate to Batman, but this? Okay, let's talk a little bit about this. So this is the comic book where, where Denny O'Neill, the editor of Batman and DC Comics decided, hey, let's kill a kid. Let's do that. Let's kill Robin. We'll kill Robin. And then we'll blame the readers for it. That's what we'll do. This is, this is what happened in this comic book. Now, this was not the original Robin. The original Robin, Dick Grayson, was off being Nightwing. This was the second Robin, Jason Todd, who wasn't overly popular with readers. He was uh, presented as being kind of bratty and defiant towards Batman. And so some readers liked Jason Todd and other readers hated him. And a lot of readers just didn't want Robin and Batman at all. Even though there'd been a Robin and Batman for decades. A lot of readers wanted Batman to be on his own. A lone, avenging, vigilante type. And so... There was, you know, mixed popularity for this Robin. And Denny O'Neill was thinking of getting rid of Robin anyway, and maybe replacing him with another Robin. But he thought, you know, we've got this, I've got this idea about letting the readers make the outcome of a comic book by phoning in. Now this is before the internet existed. And so the way he decided to do this is to give the readers a choice. There'd be a certain point in this story where Robin might either be alive or dead, and the readers would decide whether Robin was alive or dead. And since it's before the internet happened, they'd do it by making a telephone call on a certain day to a certain number. And at the end of one of the issues, before the issue where he was going to be alive or dead, they came up with two different they drew two different versions uh, of the comic book where he could be alive or he might be dead. But you had the choice, and this is the advertisement that they had at the end of one of the issues where, you know, if you call one number on a certain day, on this certain day, Robin would live, and if you call a different number, then Robin would be dead. Well, gosh, what happened? Which number got the most calls? Shockingly, it was to kill Robin. Now, Danny O'Neill claims to be surprised by this result. To be fair, like I said, the internet hadn't happened yet, so perhaps he didn't realize just how awful people are. But people can be pretty awful. And it's the people that want the awful things to happen that are most likely to bother phoning in, apparently. Uh, so yeah, they killed Robin. And the way they did it was sort of atrocious. I'm not sure... Again, this is one of those stories which 
A lot of people like it, a lot of people don't like it. But it has great historic importance in DC Comics. This changed a lot, this story. It, 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 it caused a big hubbub. It was a big deal when it happened. When the regular press got hold of, got hold of the story that they were killing Robin, you know, they made a big deal about it. And a lot of the stories that printed, that talked about this, didn't say that it was not the original Robin. It wasn't Dick Grayson who was getting killed. They just didn't pass along that information. So, you know, if you were just the average person who doesn't read comic books, but are familiar with the characters, you're going to think, hey, it's the original Robin that DC is killing off. So it was a big deal. So the event itself was a big deal. And the way they did it, this is, like I said, the result of the grim and gritty era of comic books, where the comic books changed. And they turned into something else. I don't think comic books, the Batman comic book have, has never really recovered from this in a way. Steve Donahue, when he talks about this, will doubtless blame Stan Lee. That sounds unusual, but here's the thing. Stan Lee, when he created Marvel Comics, introduced real-world consequences to superheroes. And so, because of that, Steve Donahue blames every bad thing that ever happens in a comic book on Stan Lee. Here's the thing, though. Stan Lee did that with a whole different set of comic books. Marvel comic books and DC comic books were, at one time, two different kinds of comic books. Stan Lee created his own kind of comic book in the Marvel Universe with more realistic characters, more realistic situations, barely more realistic situations, and real-world consequences. They weren't really real-world consequences, but closer to the real world. And it worked, and they were very successful, and the stories were great uh, often. And yeah, Stan Lee's vision for Marvel Comics, and along with Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, they changed comic books. DC Comics was doing something different. But here's, here's the thing about that. Steve Donahue, I think, thinks comic books should be one thing. They should be a certain type of thing. Basically, they should be Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes and nothing else. Um, that should be the type of stories you have where there are no consequences that overlap to the next story. Everything is self-contained. Uh, everything goes back to the way it was at the end of the story. It would be, it's a whole different thing. Steve Donahue thinks comic books should be that way. But if comic books had been that way and didn't change, if Stan Lee didn't arrive, we might not have comic books at all. Comic books would have died, I think. Uh, a certain amount of change is necessary. This kind of change, though, this is like... What DC Comics did, and I think the mistake that DC Comics made around this time, to go off on a tangent before I talk about what actually happens in this book, is they decided to take that idea of real-world consequences and make their comic books more gritty and realistic. And they just dialed that whole idea up to 11 and went a little far with it. A little too far, I think, which you can see in this comic book. Because you can only push a character like Batman. Batman is not a realistic character. Even though he doesn't have superpowers, he's not a realistic character. None of the DC comic book superheroes are. So you can only push them so far in the re towards realism. Batman is an excellent case in point. 
Batman ha has always been, or always was, until the 80s. He was a darker character. He fought crime at a more gritty level. But he was basically a heroic guy with integrity, and he did not exist in a realistic world. Robin is a perfect example of this. No sane man would take a little kid, dress him up in a fancy outfit, and have him fight crime with you, right? No, that would never happen. He would be insane to do that, Batman would. And we all kind of recognize that as readers. The whole idea of Robin doesn't work, but Batman is not a realistic character. Think, of what Bat think about what Batman does. He saw his parents viciously murdered in front of him, so he decides to put on a bat costume <laughs> and frighten bad guys and beat them up. It, it's, that's crazy. And he decides to take this kid who's his ward, who he's, who's he's responsible for, Put a, put a yellow cape on him and dress him up all fancy and throw him out in the path of dangerous criminals who are shooting at him. I mean, it's just, you. this would be insane. But it's, it's accepted, in, it was accepted in DC Comics because DC Comics were recognizably another world, right? It wasn't the real world. So we can read about that stuff and have fun with it and it's fine. But if you try to push it too far into the real world, all of that stuff is glaringly, I mean, it just doesn't work, man. Something's wrong. And so then we get comics like this. And here's the thing about when this came out, aside from all the other stuff I've just talked about, when The Dark Knight Returns came out, it was published in a series of graphic novels and it wasn't part of regular DC continuity. The same year this came out, 1988, by then, that Batman was so popular that they made that Batman continuity and that kind of world. And this, the same year this came out, The Killing Joke came out from Alan Moore, which is a comic book I have opinions about. And so we'll probably talk about that eventually. Also, a lot of people like that comic book. It was beautifully drawn, but I don't like that comic book. Uh, but at least that comic book was published as a graphic novel. It wasn't something a kid would, for example, pick up at the newsstand or at the spinner rack at the drugstore or wherever kids were picking up comics back in those old timey days of 1988. But, you know, for years and years, comics were something kids would pick up, right? If you're a kid, you're gonna pick up Batman. And look what you pick up with this comic book. Well, let's take a look. First of all, the story is ridiculous, but that's all right. Comic books often have ridiculous stories, right? This is chapter one. So this was published in the regular Batman comic book. Just, it's just part of the regular Batman continuity. It's the regular Batman comic book. Came out with uh, in four issues of that. And now we know where, what kind of comic book this is or where this story is going in the very beginning where Batman and Robin are fighting criminals. They could be any criminals. But wait, in the very first panel, it says, it took me three weeks to track down the kitty porn rings main warehouse. The kitty porn rings. So Batman and Robin are fighting criminals who are selling or distributing kitty porn. Kitty porn. So explain that to your 10 year old. So you've got, you've got, you've got that. You know where this story or, or the level of this story at this point. Grim and gritty. Let's take out the kitty porn ring. So they do. And Robin is being, you know, a jerk and not listening to Batman and possibly getting himself into some trouble. Meanwhile, the Joker escapes. And this whole whole story is drawn by Jim Aparo, 
who is who was like the regular he wrote a ton of Batman comics, Jim Apparel. He was just like one of the classic Batman uh, artists. I like Jim Apparel, uh, but he does have this thing, Jim Apparel does, where he makes all the characters look kind of the same. Batman looks like Superman, and they even kind of look like Robin sometimes. The Joker looks like the Joker. But he was one of the classic Batman artists. So it was just a weird experience, even at the time, to read this comic book with the Batmobile looking like the classic old-timey Batmobile. Everything looked like a regular Batman comic uh, from maybe the 70s or the early 80s. So in this comic book, Jason Todd, Robin, who thinks his parents have been killed, discovers evidence that his mother might still be alive. So he goes to the Middle East where his mother might be. And it could be a couple of different people who his mom might be. But, you know, understandably, he wants to track down his mom. Now, he, at the same time, Batman, who, who wants Robin to be uninvolved at this point because he's, you know, kind of a loose cannon, is trailing the Joker who has a missile that he could use to cause great destruction, as the Joker loves to do, so Batman trails him to the Middle East, where a bunch of goofy things happen. Robin and Batman run into each other over there, decide to work together to find Jason Todd's mom and take out the Joker. At one point, Jason Todd does find his mother, not the best, not mother of the year, but this is the thing with this comic book. And this is, I think, shows you where I think comic books went wrong. DC comic books in particular went wrong. Because they just went, like I said, they dialed this grim and gritty stuff up to 11 to the point where you have a 15-year-old child in Batman who is viciously assaulted by the Joker. It's not enough just to kill him, right? We have to viciously beat him first, and we have to have three pages of it. So first he gets pistol whipped, then he gets kicked around by the Joker, the Joker's men, and then the Joker decides to grab a crowbar. The Joker grabs a crowbar and then just viciously beats the hell out of Robin while Robin's mom stands there smoking a cigarette. And this isn't what kills Robin, the vicious three-page beating that he gets. Uh, he is blown up. <laughs> they, they put dynamite in here, and Robin, who is a heroic character and is trying to get out of these ropes and save his mom after being beat to hell, the warehouse where they are at blows up or the base where they're at blows up and Batman gets there just a little late oops so at the end of this story right here after the explosion happened is when you got to choose whether Robin lives or dies of course of course he got killed and And then the story goes on with Dead Robin, uh, with this iconic image there. Batman finds Dead Robin, vows revenge, of course. And then the story gets really silly, where the Joker becomes an ambassador for Iran. Iran chooses the Joker to be their ambassador. Now, this doesn't seem actually as ridiculous as it did when this first was published. Actually, now he would just probably be elected to office somewhere, the Joker would. But he's the ambassador to, to Iran, to the UN. And of course, he tries to kill everybody in the UN. And Batman, with some help from Superman, stops him. There you go. That's the story. But the main thing that happened in this story is that Robin was killed. And the issue I've always had with this and have since I first read it, when I was, how old when I, was I when I read this? I was 17. The problem I've had with this since I was 17 is just the way they went about this. 
where you have in the regular Batman comic book, 15 year old Robin being beaten to, just being beaten to within an inch of his life, viciously for three pages by the Joker and then blowing him up. Of course, Jason Todd didn't stay dead. He stayed dead for a while. DC kept him on ice for some time. He's back now, of course, because you can't kill any comic book character forever. But the repercussions from this story just lasted forever. Like I said, it caused a big controversy at the time. Jim Starlin actually was blamed for a lot of it. Jim Starlin, who wrote this, even though he was being told to write this and probably told how to write it. But Jim Starlin got a lot of blame for this story and eventually left DC altogether and went to work for Marvel. The people who put together merchandising for DC Comics were very unhappy uh, because they licensed out the character of Robin all over the place, you know. And here they are, here DC is killing him off. This was probably not the best decision and done in such a way that even Frank Miller, who started this whole mess off with The Dark Knight Returns, said that this was the most cynical thing he had ever seen in comic books. He has a point. You could say, well, Frank Miller's saying this? But he's right. This could have been the most cynical thing that ever happened in comic books. A death in the family, Batman. I guess I'll shut up now. I've talked long enough. I didn't particularly care for this story or where it went or how it changed comic books. I really don't think comic books have ever really recovered from this. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you for today. I will catch you next time.